Welcome. This is your host, Heidi Watson, on Two Tier Canada, the podcast where we explore the ups and downs of private practice in a diverse network of health professionals. Um, today's guest on the show is a mom of three and psychologist. She's been a psychologist for over 17 years and I'm super excited to have her on the show. Um, she has her master's in educational psychology and before that she had her bachelor's of education. Um, since that point, since her formal education, she has been taking many, many, many more courses, lots more designations and certificates, lots of postgraduate work. Um, and so she actually talked about that a little bit in the upcoming uh, interview and she has so much knowledge about and where to find stuff on the internet and just amazing courses to take in Canada so really really valuable um, she's also going to talk today a little bit about technology because her private practice that she just formally launched is online based and so that's a new one for our show and so I'm super excited to get to it today um, she's going to speak about online course courses that she's done, um, course development, training that she's had in. She's even had specialized training in uh, tele, mental health, and cyber counseling, uh, which she is now implementing. So I hope you enjoy today's show, and let's get to this interview. Okay, uh, hello everybody, and welcome to today's show. Today we have Stephanie with us in person, so hopefully the audio will be a little bit better than some of the phone interviews have been. Uh, we also have Mr. Eric here with us, so if you hear any baby sounds, he is right here. <laughs> um, so, uh, to start off, what do you love about your profession? Well, what I love about my profession is um, just being able to work with people and help them through their the challenges that they face, you know, in day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and just the concerns that they have. And I really get satisfaction out of helping people. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And you've been on this path for quite a while. You've definitely been taking lots of courses and certifications and... Yes, I have. Yeah, I've definitely been busy educating myself and just trying to make my skills more well-rounded, especially with having a teaching and psychology background. Mm -hmm. So areas that I've been working on um, pertain to business, such as, um, you know, foundations of management, and I'm taking intro to marketing right now, and then I've taken a variety of um, just short um, online courses, yeah. and I've yeah. done tons and tons of reading. Yep. Yeah, just to, to have more, I think they call them T-skills, just being more well-rounded. Uh, well right. Yes. And more prepared for what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, so when did you start first getting interested in private work? Well, you know, I, th I think it really goes back to about five or six years ago when I um, just started taking some training just on my own time. Mm -hmm. And um, so I actually took a uh, group life skills facilitation course and it was 32 days and it was um, through SIAST and went kind of four days a month and from that point I thought you know it'd be really nice to do um, you know coaching for people um, you know online or by telephone that don't have access to uh, services right maybe barriers you know isolated communities mm -hmm. um, just you know lack of transportation that sort of thing so that's kind of what sparked my interest I thought you know that would be so nice to be able to, you know, work from home and help people that, you know, just don't have easy access to service. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And you've actually done it now. You started yes. this business. Um, did you want to talk more about like your business plan or the platform that you chose? Well, I can talk about a combination of both, actually. Um, so a couple of years ago, I took some specialized counseling. It was called Cyber Counseling, and it was in partnership with uh, Therapy Online and the U of T, with that program's that training has been around for quite some time and it was like four months but the platform that we used um was called or it's called privacy privacy mail and it's just like a turnkey platform where um, we were trained on that platform through our practical training in the cyber counseling course mm -hmm. and um then as we were working through it we you know got a feel of how the system worked and um and it's um a heavily encrypted locked system mm -hmm. uh, it follows all the um, 
you know, privacy, the HIPAA and mm-hmm, PDR. Mm-hmm. Um, po- Which you have to guidelines. be careful about and, yes. and make sure it's like from Canada and that kind of stuff. Yes, so it's yeah. really good that it was from the U of T because then you know it's like Canadian yeah. accessible. Yeah, and it's more the therapy online. That's their, their platform, mm-hmm. but, but they do partner with um, the U of T. And, um, and yeah, so, you know, that was two years ago when I took their program. And then finally in January, I decided to take the plunge and purchase their software, their license for their software. And, um, you know, and so now I'm, I just started up and running on April 1st. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Yes. So just getting really into it. Yes. Um, do you like it so far? Like, are you comfortable with the platform or like, it's really nice that you're at the very beginning of your process Mm -hmm. like do you still have things that are uncomfortable and that you're still working towards or uh yeah I do actually I have some things that I'm working towards so um I have my business cards now and so now my next step is to um send out letters and the business cards to Mm -hmm. some of the doctor's offices in Saskatchewan because my license is for Saskatchewan so I'm going to do that that's one of my next steps and then um then I also have um, a work, um, a, a domain name that I chose a while ago, which I haven't linked to my hosting account. So I'm going to also have another website um, for the marketing. Mm-hmm. And then on Therapy Online, they have a list of um, service providers uh-huh. who want to be on their site as well. So I have my name there. So that's probably some of the first steps that I'm going to be working towards. Yeah, just getting into the market. Really, yeah. They know that you're ready. And... Mm-hmm. and then something new that I'm going to start now is writing a blog uh, with for Heidi mm-hmm. on her platform. And so we're very excited for that. You know how we've been having that one week that was just a blank. <laughs> we weren't sending anything out. So now we have... Um, some more experienced blog writers because you guys don't want to hear from me all the time it's going to be nice to have a new voice <laughs> helping out um let me see here what do i want to ask you next i think i want to ask more about <coughs> your business model so like what did you choose why did you choose it like what are you working towards or did you actually do a formal business plan well, you know, I did a pl- business plan a long time ago, but that was for just um, a face-to-face practice. So, oh, so you did not? You had plans for face-to-face before well, the I s- online. Yeah, I started with that, but uh-huh. it just didn't uh, <clears throat> suit my situation because I work full time and I mm-hmm, have kids, mm-hmm. and you know, to arrange a space, it was really difficult. So, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I like the idea of online. Like I've taken, you know different lots of online training and I just realize how nice it is for people to be able to access that and so you shifted so you had yes. that one model and then it's shifted more to this online and did anything yes. like I, I'm trying to push the boundaries of people's expectations mm-hmm. but did anything bad happen when you had a practice that didn't really match like what was there any catastrophic universal events <laughs> um you know I, th- I think that um, I just didn't feel comfortable like mm-hmm. using somebody's space, you know, like I'd pay the fee for the, the office space, but it wasn't mine. Uh-huh. And so I'd use it, I don't know, every so often, but I think that the face-to-face practice that I had, you know, it was kind of more on the side, like I, because it was really hard to manage working full-time and then going to a space yes. to use. You know what I mean? It just didn't match. It just didn't match. No, it was really it was really a challenge and I just it just didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. So I really needed something that would work and um, you know with the um, private mail um, you know clients you know they can go and they can you know log on and they can you know compose their conversation you know whenever they like they can you know type you know, type a message to me, mm-hmm. they can come back to it the next day if they have any other thoughts in their mind and they can keep adding to it until they're actually ready to send it. Mm-hmm. And so it's excellent because, you know, like how many times in the night, you know, a thought comes to your mind, you think, oh, geez, I forgot to ask this or whatever. Uh-huh. So, you know, at least, you know, when they're, um, you know, writing to me, they have time to, you know, really think and process and really get out what they want to say because, Sometimes it's just a lot easier when you're writing things down Mm -hmm. because sometimes, you know, with, you know, when you're in a face-to-face session, it's easy to, you know, forget things, you know, not remember what, um, 
you know, the conversation was about or yeah. something that was forgotten, but also people, you know, sometimes they get nervous. Yes. You know, in face to face. So, so I think that, um, themselves. yeah, they, they can, exactly. Say what they mean. Exactly. And, you know, and people prefer different, different modes. Some people prefer face to face, other, you know, like phone, uh-huh, some people uh-huh. like, um, you know, like email or chat. So, you know, there's different formats for, you know, for, for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. And then even for the clinician too, like, I rent a lot of clinic spaces, mm-hmm. um, but lots of people love to own their own clinic space. Mm-hmm. And so, but yeah, going from work to more work in a building away from home, I yeah. can see why that'd be so exhausting. And that's why this is so exciting that you can do mm-hmm. this kind of online work from the comfort of your own couch exactly. and not have to worry because everything is encrypted and meets all the requirements. Mm-hmm. Everything is safe for people. So it's not, yes. it's not even the same as a home office No, where somebody can get at your files Mm -hmm, exactly and you know and the clients have copies of everything that we talk about and Mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it is they they have their own copy and then it's up to them to keep it secure yes on their end of the platform yeah yeah exactly and um you know and they can um you know write to me from the comfort of their home or you know on their own time and when they want and that's what i really like about it is that they have ownership over their session Mm -hmm. you know and then um, you know, and then I, I would allow to, you know, once I received their email, I would allow two business days, you know, before I send it back, just so that I have time to, um, you know, write them. And I, and I would spend, you know, between 50 to uh, 50 minutes to an hour, just like I would in a face to face appointment, mm-hmm. you know, like really, um, you know, being effective and, you know, really addressing, you know, their concerns and taking my time and, you know, if I have any resource. Because it has a live chat feature too, right? Um, yeah, and that one you would have to make an appointment, of course, for the live chat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that feature as well. And then, you know, and that that's a really different experience too than, mm-hmm. than the email. Style ones. Yeah, yeah. And then I also have, a, like, my own number if, um, you know, there's a, you know, you know, there's always with technology, you know, sometimes there's a glitch or something, you know, happens or, mm-hmm. you know, maybe on their end or whatever. So they can always give me a call and as well. Yeah. If there's any problems, mm-hmm. but, um, on the platform itself, like it's a, t- it's a turnkey platform. There's, um, you know, there's an intake form on there and there's all kinds of information and resources. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for this, um, form of on- online counseling, you know, it's, you know, if there's domestic violence or, if there's, um, you know, abuse or a traumatic experience or trauma, mm-hmm. I mean, those are best addressed face to face. And I have that on my, uh, the platform as well. In one of the information sheets, it's like, you know, it's for people that have, you know, issues oh, right. and problems, but when it's more, you know, serious things, like yes. it's best to call, you know, if it's suicidal, uh, you know, you call 911 or else make arrangements to see somebody face to face. Right. So, yeah. So it's, you know, it's for, you know, some issues, but for the more serious ones or mental health um, illnesses, yeah. it's best to have face to face for those. And yeah. do you have connections across the province, um, or is that something that listeners maybe would want to reach out to give you names and contact information and stuff like that? Or um, are you just trying to, or would you just recommend them to their local um, public yes. service? Yeah, just whatever whatever services they have in their community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, they could be from anywhere in Saskatchewan. Yeah, anywhere in Saskatchewan, and way north, way way far north. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, on and, and they could, I, th- I believe the um, you know, like the the health line, yes. would, would be on there too. As so well. yeah, yeah. And then they're really good at connecting. They have a full listing of everybody that's mm-hmm. available. Yes, exactly. And health line in Saskatchewan is eight one one. I believe so. Yes. yes. Their billboard went down. Now I can't remember. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Like I, you know, this mode of um, counseling, you know, is so helpful for people, and I'm just so glad that I'm being, you know, able to offer it. And um, I think that the most, the more options people have, the better, you know, in yes. seeking help or seeking assistance support. for what they need. And like for what works with their life and their lifestyle and how much time they have, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Like they don't have to drive to a certain location, allocate a certain amount of time on a specific exactly. day. Exactly. They don't have to take time off work. It'll be so much more fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so right now you're still in transition. You're still working, correct? For yes. an uh, employer? Yes. Um, so what is your plan for transition? Are you feeling overburdened with the private practice as well on the side? Or do you have a really strict amount of time that you give to it? Um, 
No, I'm not feeling overburdened at all. And um, so I'm, I'm just beginning. So I'll just have to see how things develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no strict rules right now? No, no, no strict rules. I'm just, you know, at the beginning point of, um, you know, getting my services out there so people are aware of it. And then, you know, I, I guess I'll just be playing it by, by ear and, you know, see, yes. seeing how things develop. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm quite flexible right now. Um, and do you plan to stay employed? For a, like for because like lots of people are very they believe that you know you must quit your job and start your private practice. Oh, um, okay. And so like mm -hmm. keeping the balance, like mm -hmm. I'm still employed mm -hmm. um, and have been <laughs> for the five years that I've run my private practice. Mm -hmm. And lots of people think, oh my goodness, that's so um, <coughs> intense. Mm -hmm. But that uh, that balance can be found. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you know, I still plan to um, you know with my employer and work full-time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as my private practice develops and you know once it gets to a point where I can you know make that transition just mm -hmm. to private practice you know I'll you know that's what I will do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we even have a couple other people too that make that transition like after retirement and later down the road we have mm -hmm. a couple eHIS users that are uh, of that type right because private practice can be so flexible that you can do it like one day a week if you wanted to mm -hmm. and it doesn't yes. um, it doesn't have to be anything specific yeah yeah but then you know it can you know there, there's so many ideas and possibilities out there like it's you know anything a person can imagine you mm -hmm. know there's no strict rule of what it should be and what it shouldn't be mm -mm. Um, that's why yours is so exciting cause since it's all virtual and online and everything. Yes, I just love online work. I think it's just amazing. I would just love to be able to work full time from home. Mm -hmm. You know, having the flexibility, managing my own schedule, and spending time with my you know my kids. But I, I do like being home. I'm just mm -hmm. I think I'm just a homebody <laughs> probably because I've never had a home. <laughs> just want to be there more often. Yeah, I just love I love, I love being at home. Yeah. Um. Did you find it hard to build up your tech skills? Um, I feel like lots of people think, oh, a new grad would go into a tech kind of based business, mm -hmm. whereas you have quite a lot of experience and quite a lot of training. Mm -hmm. And so was that tech piece difficult? Well, you know, I always find taking class a challenge. And well, actually I enrolled, enrolled in a web design course and I did, I learned some um, coding. I learned some Ooh. HTML <laughs> and I learned some CSS mm -hmm. cascading style sheets. Very nice. Yes, yes. And yeah, my, my instructor was right. He said that, you know, when you take this course, you probably feel like throwing your computer across the room. You'll be so <laughs> frustrated, especially when you work for two hours trying to make the code work and you realize that you forgot a dot. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think my vision got worse, you know, taking oh, that no. class. Yeah, I did well, but good thing my friend's brother is a computer programmer. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So you know, after challenging myself to that, which was just absolutely insane, my kids kept telling me, "Mom, quit, drop that class. You're getting too frustrated." <laughs> uh, yeah. After taking that, you know, anything, you know, WordPress, um, any type of online platform. I mean. Those are just going to be a piece of cake for me because compared mm -hmm. to what I was doing, taking, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that, you know, with technology, you know, sometimes it just seems intimidating, but just, you know, take the time. There's lots of tutorials out there. You don't have to do what I did by learning coding for a website because there's WordPress out there, there's Wix, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and then, of course, you know, with your eHIS, you use the WordPress. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, there's lots of content management systems out there and templates and everything like that. So, but I'm just the type of person that I like to learn things um, thoroughly and I like to learn the foundation of things. Yes. I don't like to have, um, you know, gaps in my learning. So that's why I went for, you know, let's learn the programming because I never learned that before and I was curious, but I, <laughs> I know now I didn't become a computer programmer <laughs> <laughs> but it's good that that curiosity can like carry you into things that you're not necessarily comfortable with exactly you still did it yes yes i sure did <laughs> yeah um you mentioned your kids um how do you imagine 
like how do they feel about the private practice starting up and do you think that there's going to be a big impact on the family um yeah though they're you know they're, they're excited about my private practice and um and yeah i mean you know once i start doing it full time it will have a big impact because i'll be home mm -hmm. yes and it'll be exciting <laughs> and much more available yes and more available that's right just a quick interruption here. Two Tier Canada has been brought to you by the Electronic Health Information System, an electronic health record made specifically for private practitioners. Check out our demo at e-his.ca. Now, let's get back to this month's interview. Let's see here. Oh, so what are your future dreams? Are there any like background big dreams that you're kind of moving towards? Like would you ever practice with employees? Or would you ever get that building way down in the road that you would own? Do you have any plans like that? Well, I like to be mobile. So I think my plan would be to, um, you know, do everything online from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the odd time, you know, I would go to a location, you know, and meet a client. But I think um, I'm also interested in coaching. Yes. And I'm actually enrolled in a personal and executive coaching program right now. And who's that with? What's that about? Um, well, that's actually, you know, I knew, I know a few psychologists that have taken the program, like it's post-grad uh -huh. training, uh -huh. and you have to have a master's degree, and all, like it's, the, the instructors are stellar, they're all um, doctoral level, whether uh -huh. it's, um, you know, in business or psychology, there's a lot that have transitioned yes. after being in, um, doing psychology for a certain period of time, and it's actually from the College of Executive Coaching. And they're located in California. They have a 100% online program. So I've been doing oh. a lot of teleclasses yeah. and a lot of practice. Uh -huh. um, so I know one psychologist in Regina that's taken the, um, the program 100% online. And then another one that I actually did their five-day intensive yeah. and then took the rest of it online. So, so I've and been do doing that. you have to like, certify in Canada or is it not like a certificate uh, no, it's, style? It's just continuing No, it's, it's through the um, International Coaches Federation. Uh -huh. So they're accredited. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. I'm going to be working towards my my coaching certification with the ICF. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm doing okay. as well. And that's what I want to do, um, you know, online, in person, that sort of thing. And I'm really interested, kind of, I'm, I'm not sure what my niche would be, but there's different areas that I'm interested in, such as, um, you know, entrepreneur coaching, business coaching, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, transition coaching, whether you're going from, you know, um, like an ingrained career to wanting to branch out to another area of career, um, or else just transitions, mm -hmm. you know, and just life enhancement. So I'm, I'm interested in that. And my background in psychology, links. you know, is, is a solid foundation for mm -hmm. that. And plus the education, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done that. So yeah. So I, so now I just realized that, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop, t you know, finish these courses up and really focus on my business because I've been putting all my energy into learning and now I'm going to be putting it into my business. Mm-hmm. And you've been learning and quite a bit. Yeah. Um, like how, how many years have you been prepping, would you say? Oh, gosh. Um, probably, yeah, it's just, it's just insane. Um, probably four years. Like when I yeah. took the program, um, I think I graduated in 2016 um, from Athabasca University. I took six master level classes. Those were the most challenging courses I've ever taken. Well, besides the computer programming, that was, yeah. that was even worse. But these... <laughs> Yeah, it was. I was just going to take, you know, one class uh -huh. teaching online because I was interested in online teaching, and then took another one. I thought, well, I'll take a certificate. Yeah. But the three classes that I or the two classes that I had weren't um, the three classes that I needed for a certificate. It was either a certificate oh. in instructional design or a certificate in educational technology. But the two classes that I had fit each category, so I would have had to take two more anyways. So oh. that would have been four. So I thought, well, I might as well just take six and get the post baccalaureate diploma. Yeah. So in which one did you pick? Um, instructional design. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I t took. So I, you know, took some classes about, you know, online teaching, distance education, evaluation and program development, you know, instructional design. Um, yeah. So that was, that was a lot of work. Like my house went to, <laughs> it became a big mess. You know, I just, did, I, I didn't have time for anything. My kids and my uh -huh, course and uh -huh. working full time and yeah, it, it ate up a lot of my time, like lots uh -huh. of sacrifice and lots of papers. And yeah, it was intense, like tons and tons of reading, probably about 12 hours of reading a week. Like it was, it was just wow. unbelievable. Like it was, 
it was more diff like it was more challenging and took more time than any of my master courses at the U of R. Like when I took my um, yeah. um, my ed psych because mm -hmm. it was you know I, th I think a lot of the papers were you know you're rese researching a topic, but whereas at um, Athabasca University, it was more in just higher level stuff like you know evaluating this program design based on you know whatever model you choose so there's mm -hmm. a lot of application a lot of um information synthesis and evaluation like it was just t t total different level of um yeah skill development mm -hmm. like it was yeah it was really intense yeah so i took yeah i took that six and you know, six like, courses for two years yeah, yeah it was busy that would be very busy because it it's expensive. not like it, you're not new to this like it was after your master's yeah. like you're in academia mm -hmm. and it was still hard <laughs> yeah and I hadn't you know written a paper for a long time so I had to mm -hmm. you know go back to the APA format and, and stuff like that so yeah so it was it was you know really really super busy and then since then you know I, I realized that you know I wouldn't I need some business skills so I took another class throughout the Basque University and um, it was called um, I think introduction to management uh -huh. so I did that one and the classes you have six months and you just work at it on your own pace whereas they at the uh, master level uh, courses at Athabasca they were cohort based so that means we had to post to the discussion board once a week and we um, went through the course like everybody together. else we had our own group yeah so th that was a different model um, but the undergraduate courses at Athabasca you know just basically work at your own pace you have a tutor if you have any questions um, they give you like a schedule of when you know assignments should be done you just follow that order uh -huh. and so you could take two months to finish the class or you could take six yeah so that's a totally different model so yeah so I took that introduction to so management much more there flexible for your life yeah more flexible definitely that's a key another course that I took it was through the U of T continuing education or continuing studies um, they have lots of really good certificate programs that are only three course certificates okay. in business and management and everything else and uh -huh. um, you know stellar instructors that you know master's degrees or doctorates but people that are actually working in the field and the course that I took through them it was um, e-business e-commerce management course uh -huh. and it was just uh -huh. the one class and so we had actually live webinars that mm -hmm. were two and a half hours a week and it was recorded so if you couldn't attend you could still access the webinar and the notes and that was really really good like about online business yeah development and things like that so that was really really helpful and was it applicable um to private practice is like or did you have to kind of bend it a little bit to apply um no it was applicable applicable for me because i'm interested in online business mm -hmm. and you know Equated website and everything perfectly. like that but one thing that i learned from that course like from the instructor you basically have to you know know a little bit of about a lot of areas Yes. You know, like about, you know, website design or you don't have to be, do the coding or anything, but still, mm -hmm. you know, website, you know, business, marketing. So you almost have to have like a collection of skills yeah. when you have an online business. Mm -hmm. Unless you hire somebody, but that can be really expensive. So yeah. if you can develop some of those within yourself, mm -hmm. um, that's really beneficial. And, you know, and it was funny because I got into a role of taking classes so that I... <laughs> registered for a few and then I decided no I won't I won't take those and um, but I also just started another one um, April 1st and it was it was a textbook that I bought for a course last fall and I, uh -huh. then I dropped it but I had of course I kept, had to keep the digital textbook yeah and so I re-registered um, and it's actually it's a mark it's an introduction to marketing class from ah. Athabasca University so I have six months to finish that so mm -hmm. I'm and doing you can that. actually do it while you do your private practice. So you can actually apply it yes, right away. <laughs> yes, and while I do my coaching courses. So right now yes. I'm taking four teleclass courses and the calls are, um, it, it's a, so since it's a telecourse, um, I probably have like about four hours of calls per week where I can just dial and listen in on the class. Because oh. you have to, like with the ICF, you have to um, have in-person hours. And these okay, are yeah. considered in-person. So when you're listening live, just like being in a class. Yeah. And you can ask questions. So, so we have like a, a class that's by telephone. So it's a really different that's format. That's interesting. Yeah. Because it would the dynamic would still be the same. You'd still call out when you yeah. had a question. And same yeah. thing in a big class. Yeah, exactly. And I should mention something else too. Um, you know, through my experience being a student and learning at um, Athabasca University when I was in the instructional design program, I learned all about MOOCs. And they're massive open online courses. There's a lot that are free 
Um, something you have to pay for, but um, I registered for... Is that what the platform is called, MOOCs? No, it's just it's just a term that's used for courses that are already pre-developed. Oh, okay. And the modules are all set out, uh -huh. similar to what you put on your website. Uh -huh. That's called a massive um, open online course oh, okay. where different people could access it. Yeah. You know, some are paid. There's lots of free ones out there too. But um, there's a course marketplace called Udemy. Oh, yes. I think they have like 55,000 courses on there. Like there's there are tons. Um, and then they have different specials that come up. So I think there was a special on for, you know, it was either 10 or $15. But I, I registered for a few. And one is called 12-in-1 um, Digital Marketing. Uh -huh. So I've been taking that. And you have, like, you know, lifetime access as long as the company is still there. Yes. <laughs> and um, so you basically you can work at it at your own pace. You can contact the instructor. But there are usually people that have experience in the field. Yes. And so I found that really good. Like, it's very... Um, practical hands-on where you actually do the assignments and you can work on like your own website so I'm working through that um, I've just been listening to the module just because I've been I was too busy with that computer programming class to actually you know apply anything right now so I'm mm -hmm. just kind of going through the process of just listening to all the um, the videos because it's divided up quite nicely with each topic and just a little like a short video for each one of them mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, I have that and then Another one that I signed up for was, um, it was actually website development or design, but it's they're, they're using WordPress oh, yes. and they're showing you different formats for different businesses. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so I haven't started looking at that, but so I have different courses that are kind of in my pocket that I'm going to, um, We're very access. marketing based right now. Yeah. Yeah. Really marketing based. And then yeah. I actually was signed up for, a, um, a beating class. Actually it's, it's online. It was uh, wire beating oh yeah 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 so i made a necklace nice. <laughs> i made a bracelet for my daughter yeah so still enough time for <laughs> yeah, extracurriculars exactly. <laughs> to have fun uh-huh exactly yeah, yeah so i so i did that and um yeah so I, you know and i'm just and i you know i had bought a couple books one was called wordpress for dummies and then um digital marketing for dummies too mm -hmm. so the digital marketing for dummies looks really good it's 2017 i just ordered it through amazon and um yeah, so I'm going to, you know, go through that. And then I, you know, once I finish uh, my coaching course and the marketing course, I'm just going to lie low with any type of college or university class. I'm going to just stop <laughs> and then just do I more. Know, you might not I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Word of warning. Um, you know, I kind of just got into a course momentum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, yeah. but I feel more prepared and, and ready because there's just so much to learn, you know, with online businesses. Mm hmm yeah. yeah, and there's so many options and variety and exactly and that kind of thing. And if you like it, if you like that academia, then why not, right? Mm -hmm. and yeah, and I think the thing with um, online business and online marketing is person really has to be <clears throat> careful, like, you know, in planning and looking at your um, marketing plan because mm -hmm. a lot of money could, could be wasted. Yes, exactly. You know, if you, do, if you don't really have a plan and if mm -hmm. you direct it into different sources and you don't do your research... So I think, you know, being able to build some of your own skills, like, you know, taking some courses through Udemy, they're cheap, you're not uh -huh. investing lots of money into it, mm -hmm. can be really, really beneficial when you're looking at marketing, because it can be very overwhelming. There's so many areas in marketing uh -huh. that is just un like We're allied health <clears throat> professionals, we're not marketing yeah. professionals, yeah, exactly. and you might not have the budget to hire marketing professionals, no. so you need to figure something out yeah. before accidentally flushing your marketing budget down the drain on poorly placed Facebook ads, let's say. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I know this course that I'm taking right now, you know, they touch on, you know, your website. They're talking about paid ads. They're mm -hmm. looking at social networking or social um, marketing, you know, like with Facebook, with Twitter. Um, you know, they look at lead pages. You know, they look at... You know everything, and the instructor is excellent. But there's a lot of marketing um, courses that are on that platform as well. So right. there's reviews by students, so you can actually look at the ratings for each of the courses before you decide. And you oftentimes, do. they'll sh you'll get to view two free videos of oh, the course, yeah, which is really helpful. And also, they let you see the um, the, the topics mm -hmm. to see what the course is going to cover. So it's it's excellent. Like I know back in the day. <laughs> In university, you used to go to the first class or two, and then you drop the class if you don't want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> so it's kind of like the same sort yeah. of procedure. Yeah, exactly. 
where you just see if you like it and move forward or you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. And, you know, for anybody that has, you know, experience or expertise in an area, um, developing your own course and putting it on Udemy, it can be an excellent passive income stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they actually have um, a login for instructors. And they take, like I, I started this, but I'm not done because I got sidetracked with my <laughs> web design class. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, they actually take you through step by step in developing your own course. And oh. so it's it's an excellent... Like just when you sign up or is it another course to do? Uh, no, no, you sign up as an instructor and mm -hmm. they give you all the steps in developing your own course. Oh, okay. And it doesn't cost you anything. Nice. Yeah. And it, it was actually... Like pretty user friendly ish. Oh, very user friendly. Yeah, I, I think I, just got past the first two steps and then I <laughs> had to leave it. But I'm going to go back to doing that too. I want to um, develop some courses as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In what? Well, um, the one that I started doing, it's um, you know it would be more for counselors, and so it's just basically clinical skills and working with parents. Of preschoolers so it's just you know things to um, you know ask you know during the intake process um, you know and just different steps you know where to go from 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 here or there mm -hmm. yeah and you'll definitely have that linked up on your website for everybody to find once it's done no yes, pressure no yes, pressure. yes 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 <laughs> once it's done so yeah so I mean you know when a person has their own business there's so many different areas mm -hmm. that you can develop so many options. So yeah, much so, variety. so many options, exactly. And like you, you don't have to be just in one little piece of it. You can do, you can pick the ones you like and head in those directions. Mm -hmm. um, so, since it's fresh in your mind, mm -hmm. um, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about business registration and like what you had to do to be um, practicing in mm -hmm. Saskatchewan? And so, of course, you are licensed as a psychologist, mm -hmm. step one. Yeah. Um, I think most of us <laughs> know that part. Yes. Um, but then after that, it's like a big mystery, right? Because not a lot of programs in school cover business mm -hmm. registry. So um, what did you have to do? Okay. Um, well, you know, the first time when I had my um, in-person private practice, um, what I did is I had to register my, my business name. And um, so they had to do a search to make sure nobody else had that name. And then I had to, um, you know, to register it and, and pay a fee for that name. And then I had to get a, a license from the city. So um, did you do that on your own or did you get a lawyer for the I first just, part? I just did it on my own. On your own. With yeah. ISC, right? Yeah. So that's what it's called in Saskatchewan. And each province has its own. Um, mm -hmm. But they're like, they're a provincial corporate registry, business name registry yeah. kind of thing. Um, so for your, your first one, was it a sole proprietorship or a corporation you registered? Um, it was a sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I also have pro private practice insurance as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, through ISC or with somebody else? Uh, no, it was just through a different um, agency with one of the associations that I belong to. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, and then this time around, like for my online practice, um, I'm just using my my own name. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie Fadak. Yep. I, I just didn't want to spend more money on another business name, you know yes. what I mean? So and I think a lot of um, psychologists use their name anyways. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to keep things simple this time around. Mm -hmm. And then I just have my, then I got a license with the city too and just have my name. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, especially with like, if you travel, you have to be careful about the city licenses, mm -hmm. um, but then since you're at home, mm -hmm. and your office is at home, and you're registered in this city, mm -hmm. then you can practice across the province, mm -hmm. um, but you won't be able to practice out of the province no. unless you register there, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and one thing about working online, um, yeah, you have to make sure that your clients, you know, have their internet service in Saskatchewan. Oh, that's how it worked. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, did you find your, like, did you reach out to your regulator at all for this, like, help with this kind of thing? Were they pretty helpful or? Yeah, we have policies in place. Yeah. yeah. And also with, um, you know, I've done a lot of research and, yeah, like, you know, even if somebody, you know, is from Saskatchewan and living out of province. I can't provide services to them like it's you know it's very boundary specific you know they have to be in Saskatchewan. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, that's really good, yeah, because lots of people are really intimidated by that, like, mm -hmm. registration phase. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, we're taking you out, we're taking you out. <laughs> um, so, was there anything that we missed? Um, I'm wondering, like, if you had any really big piece of advice for listeners, what would you tell them? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I would just tell them to, um, to, you know, just think about what your goals are and just realize that, you know, it just takes a lot of, like, to really map it out, like, all the little steps that you would take to get from A to Z. Um, because I think some people think that they could just go from, from A to Z, but there's so many different steps in between to take. And once you start taking those, you know, smaller steps, it won't seem so scary in the end because when you take those smaller steps, you know, you're making like small changes to get to that big piece. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you think about, you know, going from A to Z, it's like, it's, you know, it's really, it can be really, you know, intense. really scary and intense. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like I just can't visual, visualize myself doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, once you're able to sit down and really make a plan of, you know, short term and long term goals and really, you know, work each day, you know, on something so that you can see your progress, you know, of moving forward. And as you, you know, do those things, you know, reach those smaller goals, you know, that, that change starts to happen. And it doesn't seem so foreign, you know, right. going from, you know, going into a private practice. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. those little bits at a time build up to a big difference. Yeah. And also just connecting with like-minded people that, you know, are positive and, you know, maybe are in transition or have made the change. It makes a really, really big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Having, being involved in groups and things like that. Where, did yeah. you find groups of people or did you, did, and online, do you find groups of people that are like in businesses or private practice? Um, yeah, there's, there's one group that I, um, that I'm in where they're in private practice. So that's been helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and talking with you, Heidi too, that's been really helpful too. You know, with yeah. your business. We ran into each other a year ago, two years ago. Yes, yes. It was, and um, just I think been... Holly, Holly told me about you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was really helpful. You know, and then even with this coaching course that I'm taking right now, there's a lot of people that are already doing coaching and then some that are in, um, you know, in leadership roles or in organizations and, mm -hmm. you know, that are psychologists so that mm -hmm. are looking at transition because they've been in their careers like for so long. Yes. You know, some are, have been in their careers for 20 years. Nice. And sometimes when you're so entrenched and ingrained in your career, sometimes it can be more hard challenging. To transition. More, yeah, hard, harder to transition. Because it looks like you got your groove, and then it's like to hop out of the groove is really hard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. So just little little steps make a big difference. Yeah, and, and to focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. Was, <laughs> I have so many interests that, you know, I, I realized that I was kind of, you know, all over the map at times, it seems. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just gathering those skills. But now I'm going to, you know, really zero in on my business and really focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On getting this marketing out there and building it up yeah. and getting it launched. Yeah. Um, well, I hope your private practice the best. And Thank you're you. only... Uh, like seven days into it. <laughs> I know, I know. I have um, to get my letters out. So I hope you get your first, do you have your first client already yet? Uh, no, not yet, but oh. I had a telephone one just oh, last yeah. week. Okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. So yeah, you're already drumming up interest and everything like that. Yeah, so well, really good. well, I've had my site, like my face-to-face -face on um, practice on TheraVibe, and that's a counseling hosting site, and there's Psychology oh, okay. Today, and then there's, mm -hmm. there's other ones, but there's a lot of... Um, different platforms out there that are popping up. But I really yes. noticed that there's been ads for online, um, like CBT counselors and things like that. Like there's, yes. there's a bunch of, um, you know, businesses that are popping up where they're looking for national service providers to oh. join their, their platform, but oh, okay. offering different kinds of services. So it's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. There's lots. lots of this, this trend is really starting. To it happen. is, it is. And there's a lot of platforms out there that, um, you know, offer, Video, like, you know, there's a lot of video pl um, platforms out there, you know, that are geared towards, you know, health practitioners mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's really, it's really growing. Cool. 
Well, thank you for being on the show today. Um, mm -hmm. your, con your information is super valuable, and it's really great for everybody to know about mm -hmm. online practices and that all the options that are available for them, and especially all the courses that you've taken too. Yes. Really valuable. Yes. If anybody wants to know about any of those platforms, just stay tuned because... Um, my first blog that I'm going to write is going to be about, you know, where can you access some of that free training or some, you know, even very inexpensive um, mm -hmm. training online, like through those mm -hmm. massive open mm -hmm. online um, courses. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. very valuable. Yes. So definitely it's check amazing. out the blog. Um, so that'll be coming out, we think, April 23rd. Oh, okay. So don't don't miss out on that one. I better Make sure get busy subscribe. writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least I have my idea. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, actually, well, this this podcast will be coming out in May. Oh, okay. And so, yes. So, okay. <laughs> since it's, it's May now, <laughs> you make sure you check out that blog post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Any, any other thoughts or? Uh, no, no. I'm just you know excited to um, you know see some of the other podcasts that are going to be coming up and um yeah i'm excited to you know to um you know write the, the blogs and uh, go from there awesome yeah and maybe okay. down the road i can provide an update yes yes mm -hmm. we'll have to do this again yes um well thank you for coming and uh, we will talk to you guys later thank you. thank you so much stephanie for coming on the show today your um, information is super valuable and very helpful for people out there who are just getting their private practices starting or thinking about taking their private practice in a new direction. Um, if you like today's show, make sure you subscribe wherever you are listening. Um, leave us a comment. Leave us a, re a review. We would love to hear from you. Um, hopefully we're getting these tech issues under control and I'll try another telephone interview in a in, with a new, new, some new tech, uh, and hopefully that helps with the audio complications that we've been having. Um, and yeah, I uh, reach out to me, contact me. I would love to hear from you guys, and we will see you on next month's show.